Alright, today I guess I'll be teaching you how to use the effects, and um, people have complained about my shaky camera, and you can get over it because I don't care. Or you can just figure it out yourself. Yeah. Um, anyways, I'm going to teach you how to use the effects today. I'm um, sorry if the camera is shaky or if there's anything in the way or whatever. Um, I haven't posted a video in a while though. I've been occupied with being depressed and whatnot. Um, anyway, some people ask, like, how to use the effects and whatnot. Um, well, first off, plug in your guitar through either the two inputs and then get the level correct so it's not over leveling and slow light here splashing or whatever. Um,. And then once you can do that, then you just play and... I don't know if you hear that. That's without the effects. And see, to turn on the effects, you would just hold the shift button, and you would press uh, the effect button, and you'll see here in a second. I can't reach for the camera down. And see, once you press shift, how the, how the green light's on, that means the effect would be on this channel. And I don't know how it works using like a stereo input. You can like change between stereo. But I mean, you can only apply it to one input, so I'm not quite sure how that works. But I only record using mono, so it doesn't bother me. Like if you press it again, then it'll just go to B, which is this input over here. And uh, you can't do both for some stupid reason. I don't know. It'd be pretty cool if you could. Well, yeah, or you could like assign two different effects and have like a weird stereo sound or whatever. Um, anyways, if you, if once it's on, you can press the effect button, and it'll come up with the effects menu, and right now I got my guitar plugged in, I'm using a vocal effect. So you can clearly tell that you don't have to use a, um, you don't have to use, like, say, particularly a guitar effect, or bass effect, or drum effect. Um, they fall into several categories, and those are, let's see, uh, there's guitar, Acoustic, bass, vocals, and there's drums. They each have a various effects. There's some delays for distortion on guitar. This is just a traditional distortion. This is the first effect on the unit. And let me just play and show you what it sounds like. I think a lot of the effects are a bit subpar compared to amp sounds, and they sound really fake. Um, and my guitar is making a lot of noise because I'm not running through my compressor. Um, it's just running straight into there. You don't have to use any preamp, but, I mean, you get a better sound using a preamp and whatnot, so. And you can probably get it louder. It's not that loud. I got everything turned up all the way, so. Anyways, here's the traditional distortion setting with, uh, it aligned as such. <laughs> As you can tell, I mean, my amp, I think my amp sounds better, but I mean, some people might like it. Um, there is some pretty cool stuff just to mess around on here, like if you go down through the, uh, lists, I mean, there's some metal ones, but I don't know, really that great. Um, there's a few that I like to mess around with. There's the, um, what's it called again, the, uh, BM lead, which is like a phase shift, um, like, listen. And I'll mess around with the uh, parameter there, which will change the key of it. Like, let me just hit a note here. You can clearly tell it. You can clearly tell it's different. And see, so I can turn it up. Way different. And then also, it can go to negative phase shifting. And that's pretty interesting just to mess around with. Um, there's also the octave distortion, and the parameter on here would change it to uh, 100 being full octave, and then all the way down to 1 being no octave. And back on the BM lead, which I like to mess around with, it just changes the uh, phase shift. And there's a bunch of other distortions, and I guess you just mess around with it if you do have this. 
Oh, I forgot to mention this is only on the DPO2. The DPO2 CF does not have the built-in effects for the input. Um, the effects cannot be um, cannot be um, used after you finish the recording. So when you're recording, you can't um, you have to use the effects to record onto your tracks. It doesn't um, you can't add them after. That kind of sucks. Um, there is another effect also here. It's the reverb, but that's only for mastering or playback of tracks and to turn it off or on, you just use the shift key and then press the thing. The light goes on. And this would be like the master, and then each channel has its own sin where you're uh, playing tracks. It's pretty cool to mess around with. Um, add some depth, do some lead, you know, set it apart. Especially when you're mastering. Um, let's see. You can, there, like, a lot of clean stuff's really good. I don't like the distortion settings. But I like some of the vocal stuff. Especially just playing guitar, but you can use it for vocals too, I guess. Like, this is also a phase shift, but it's in clean, so if you're going to use your amp distortion through it and run an effect, you can do this. And so you get, like, the phase shift. Sometimes it has delays and whatnot, like the, the phase shift or the octave. Um, yeah. I think that's about it. Basically, if you have the effects, just mess around with the parameter and the type of effect. Just go through them all, you know. Turn the parameter all the way up or all the way down, it works. Um, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, that's about it. So I hope this video does help you. Um, I'm sorry for the shaky camera for all of you who care. Uh, stay tuned for my next video, which will be something else besides effects, because I can't remember what it is. See ya.